Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the addition rule where we're going to calculate the probability of any overlapping events. So in probability there's something called the addition rule. So if we were to calculate the probability event of event A occurring or event B occurring, there's a possible overlap that A and B will also occur. So if we just want A or B to occur, we also have to take in consideration the overlap that where a and B both occur in whatever event that you're trying to measure. So the addition rule is used to calculate the probability of an event A or event B from occurring, which is noted by P of A or B, so probability of A or B occurring. So the addition rule states that the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability that A and B both occur. So if you think about it, if we want the probability of A or B to happen in our uh, sample set, we want the probability of just the A part in addition to the probability of just the B. So in sp we also have to consider the overlap that might occur when both A and B happen. So we're going to subtract that probability, which is just the multiplication rule of event A and B are both occurring. So in example one, we're going to find the probability that at least one event occurs. So what is the probability that you roll a six on at least one of the two dice? So the probability of event A, which is rolling a six, would be just one six, because there's six sides, so there's going to be one chance that you can roll a six on that specific die. On event B, or for event B, same thing. If we want to roll a six, it would be one sixth, because we want at least one sixth I'm sorry, we want to roll at least a 6 on one of the die. Um, but then there's also a probability that we roll the two die, the, two, the dice, and then we both get a 6 and 6 on both dice, which is going to be the probability of A and B occurring, which is 1 6 times 1 6, which is a chance of 1 36. So to roll snake eyes, which is a, if you roll the same, the two of the same number, uh, specifically a 6, It'd be one sixth times one sixth to get one thirty sixth. Now, for the addition rule, we want the the probability of rolling a six on at least one of the two dice. So that would be the probability of A or B happening. So the first dice will be a sixth, or the second dice could be a sixth. That'd be one sixth plus one sixth, and minus the overlap that we might have a a roll of two sixes. So that's 136. We're going to subtract that from the sum of 16 and 16. So we'll get 1136 as the probability of having at least one 6 on one of the dice. All right, in example two, we're going to have to work backwards here. So it says of 100 students surveyed, 95 students like chocolates or raisins, 35 like both chocolate and raisins, and 40 like raisins. So how many students like chocolate. So the thing is, they give us the the at least or the the fact that there's 95 people that like chocolate or raisins. They like they give us 35 of the 100 that like both chocolate and raisins and they give us the probability of just raisins. So we don't know the probability of chocolate. We do know the probability of people just liking raisins. We do know the probability of them both liking chocolate and raisins. And we know the probability of of the 100 people surveyed, how many like chocolate or raisins. Okay, so we have to figure out how many people like chocolate only. So using the addition rule, we're going to work backwards and substitute the information that we know. We know how many people like chocolate or raisins. That was 95 out of 100. That's equal to what we're trying to find, the probability of how many people liked chocolate only. We know the probability of people like raisins, and we know the probability of people liking chocolate and raisins. So then all we're going to do is solve for the probability of people liking chocolate. Subtract 40 over 100 on both sides. Add 35 over 100 on both sides. And then combine like terms and simplify. We get the probability of people liking chocolate. That's 90 out of 100. So specifically, out of 100 people, there are 90 students that like chocolate. 
Now, there are going to be cases where you will find the probability of mutually exclusive events. And what that means is that when you have something that's called mutually exclusive, that means that there's no possible way of that event actually happening. So, if we're trying to find the probability of choosing a king or an ace from a standard 52 card deck, well, keep in mind we have the addition rule that occurs. So, we know the probability of choosing a king would be 4 out of 52. Well, the same odds would occur with an ace because there's four aces in a 52 card deck. The probability of choosing an ace would be 4 out of 52. Now, what's the likelihood of choosing a king and an ace at the same time? Well, the thing is, that doesn't happen because you can't choose a king and an ace from a deck. Okay, so like it's, we're choosing just one card. You can choose a king or you can choose an ace, but you can never choose a king ace because that doesn't ever exist. So the probability of choosing a king and an ace is zero because you have the two the two uh, face cards that are completely different. You can, you can choose an ace of spades or you can choose a king of hearts, but you can't choose a king of aces because that doesn't make sense. So these two events are considered mutually exclusive. So to figure out the probability of choosing a king or an ace from a standard 52 card deck would be the 4 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52 minus the probability of choosing a king and an ace at the same time, which doesn't, it can't happen. So then that would be minus zero. So 4 out of 52 ends up being 8 out of 52, simplified into 2 out of 13.